Thank you so much for having us. We're over, you're over here, Mr. President. Thank you. Hey, Kelly. Okay. Mr. President, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. We appreciate you taking the time. Good. Good. And we appreciate your commitment to answer our questions. Sure. We really appreciate that. Over the years, I've heard you talk about your adherence to a philosophy called positive thinking. This is the mantra that if you believe something, if you visualize it, um, then it will happen. To an extent, I also think in terms of the downside. Right. Uh, I do, I've, I've been but, given a lot of credit for positive thinking, but I also think about downside, because only a fool doesn't. To what extent do you think that that positive thinking mindset is suitable to handling the worst pandemic that we've seen in a century? I think you have to have a positive outlook. Otherwise, you would have nothing without a positive outlook. I think we've done an incredible job between the ventilators and stopping very infected people from China coming in, meaning putting the ban on China, which, frankly, nobody wanted me to do, practically nobody, because it was very early in January. Uh, then putting the ban on Europe, not an easy thing to do. When you put a ban on Europe, that's a big thing. We would have uh, probably lost hundreds of thousands of lives more had I not done that. And all of the experts, every one of them, not one of them wanted to do it. They thought it was too severe. Uh, three months later, they're all saying, I'm glad you did it. The criticism of you that, that is most prominent is about the communication. It's the public health experts saying that it needs to be based in reality. And they're saying that the wishful thinking and the salesmanship is just not suitable at a time when a pandemic has killed 145,000 Americans. And it's, it's that I understand what you're saying, that people need to hear positive thinking. But, you know, for the past five months, it's been the virus is totally under control, and the cases have been going up and the deaths it, have been going up. Look, look, but you've been saying it's under control. Nobody knew what this thing was all about. This has never happened before. 1917, but it was a totally yeah. different it was a flu in that yeah. case, okay? But other than 1917, there's never been anything like this. And by the way, if you watch the fake news on television, they don't even talk about it. But you know, there are 188 other countries right now that are suffering, some proportionately far greater than we are, okay? As bad as we Very are. Very few. What? Some proportionately greater than we are. Right now, right now, Spain is having a big spike. There are tremendous problems in the world. You look at Moscow, look at what's going on with Moscow, look at Brazil, look at these countries, what's going on. This was sent to us by China, one way or the other, and we're never going to forget it. Believe me, we're never going to forget it. And we were beating China at every single point. We were beating them on trade. We were, beat we were making progress like nobody's ever made progress. They had, before the pandemic, they had the worst year Jonathan, that they've had in 67 years. You know that, with the tariffs and everything else I did. We were taking in billions of dollars. I was giving some of it to the farmers. The farmers were doing well because I was targeting, they were targeting the farmers, I was targeting China. We were doing good. Then all of a sudden, the game changed, and I had to close it down. I closed down the greatest economy ever in history. I, well, wait. Yeah. And then I closed it down, and now we're opening it. And we saved, by the way, by closing it down, we saved millions of lives. If we would have gone to herd, and we knew very little about the disease, if we would have gone herd, we would have lost millions of people, millions of people. One person's too much. We're at 140,000 people. One person is too much. We're at 140. We would have lost millions of people. And those people that really understand it, they, they really understand it, they said it's incredible, the job that we've done. And again, I bring who, it up. Who the says ban, that? The ban, banning China from coming in. But it was already earlier. it was already in here. By What's the time it? it was already here, like by the time you banned China, it, it came was in there, through you. Nobody knew the extent. Nobody knew how contagious I'm not, it I'm was. Not, but no, the question is, Mr. President, maybe China knew. by June, we knew things were bad. And you know, the last time I was with you was the the day before your Tulsa rally in the Oval, and you know. You were saying big, huge crowd. It was indoors. By the way, these people—they listen to you. Big, excuse me, Jeff. Yeah. 
We had a 19,000-seat stadium. First of all, we had 12,000 people, not 6,000, which you reported, another paper report. But you couldn't even get in. It was like an armed camp. Why would you have wanted that? Because they had 120 that? Black Lives Matter people I understand, people but why there. would you have wanted and a huge Tulsa, crowd? Tulsa, excuse me, wait. And Tulsa, well, because that area was a very good area at the time. It was a, an area that was Cases pretty much stopped. over after, after, a month later, a it started before. going up. That's a month later. That but Tulsa was a very good, Oklahoma was doing very well as a state. It was almost free. It spiked a month later, a month and a half, two months later, but it was a good area. We had a tremendous crowd. We had tremendous response. You couldn't even, it was like an armed camp. You couldn't even get through. You couldn't get anybody in. But I'm, I'm We had 12,000 people. It was incorrectly reported. The other thing we had that nobody wants to talk about, so Fox broadcast it. It was the highest rating in the history of Fox television. Saturday night. It was the highest rating. Mr. President. My speech, well, wait a minute, you're, you're saying something. Yeah. That speech was the highest rated speech in the history of Fox, te Fox Television on Saturday night. And nobody says I think, that. I think you misunderstand me. I'm criticizing your ability to draw a crowd. Are well, you kidding me? I've covered you for this. five years. You draw massive I'm crowds, you get this. huge ratings. I'm asking about At the public the time, health. And I canceled another one. I had to cancel it. Right. We have a great crowd in New Hampshire, and I canceled it for the same reason. But here's the question. It, you know, I've covered you for a long time. I've, I've gone to your rallies. I've talked to your people. They love you. They listen to you. They listen to every word you say. They hang on your every word. They don't listen to me or the media or Fauci. They think we're fake news. They want to get their advice from you. And so when they hear you say everything's under control, don't worry about wearing masks, I mean, these are people, many of them are older people, well, what's Mr. Your President. Definition of control? Yeah. Under the it's giving them a false sense right of security. Now, I think it's under control. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. But that doesn't mean we aren't doing everything we can. It's under control as much as you can control it. This is a horrible plague that beset us. You really think this is as much as we can control? Uh, well, a thousand I'll deaths you, a day? I'd like to know if somebody, first of all, we have done a great job. We've gotten the governors everything they needed. They didn't do their job. Many of them didn't, and some of them did. Someday we'll sit down, we'll talk about the successful ones, the good ones. Look at that smile. The good ones and the bad. We had good and bad. And we had a lot in the middle. But we had some incredible governor. I could tell you right now who the great ones are and who the not-so-great ones are. But the governors do it. We gave them massive amounts of material. Mr. President, you changed your message this week in terms of you cancelled the Jacksonville Convention, you said wear a mask, you're saying, you know, that it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's not something you like to say. I know you said that. The By big the way, question... Not get worse like the original flow. You understand that. But... Well, I hope not. Worse. It's a thousand. Now, if you look... Uh, but, but Arizona's going down. If I could just finish my question. Texas is going down and Florida's going down. The question is, are you going to, even some of your own aides wonder whether you would stick to that message until election day, whether in a week or two you won't say, right, we've got to reopen again, we, got, we can't do this stuff anymore, that you'll get bored of talking about the virus and go back to that no, sort of I'm cheerleading. No, I never get bored. I never get bored of talking about this. It's too big a thing. And again, so will it you stick to that message? By China, it should have been stopped by China, and it wasn't. But now it's here. We have you're it the here. And I think I'm you're very consistent. No, this is a very serious thing. Do you think I, we have 140,000 people at this moment? More this than is that. a very, very yeah. serious situation. And what you have to do is handle it the best it can be handled. And again, I'm working with the governors. I got them tremendous right. amounts of equipment that they would have never gotten. Jonathan, they wouldn't have equipment now if I didn't get it. When can you commit, by what date, that every American will have access to the same day testing that you get here in the White House? Well, we have great testing. We're, we're doing, and, and by what other date? people do. Let me explain the testing. We have tested more people than any other country, than all of Europe put together times two. We have tested more people than anybody ever thought of. India has 1.4 billion people. They've done 11 million tests. We've done 55. It'll be close to 60 million tests. And, you know, there are those that say, you can test too much. You do know that. Who says that? Oh, just read Who? the manuals, read the books. Manuals? Read the what books. Manuals? Read the books. What books? What testing does? Who, no, I'm it sorry. Shows, wait a minute. Who let me let me explain. What testing does? It shows cases. It shows where there may be cases. Other countries test 
You know when they test? They test when somebody's sick. That's when they test. And I'm not saying they're right or wrong. Nobody's done it like we've done it. We've gotten absolutely no credit for it. But we've come up with so many different tests. The only thing that we have now is some people have to wait longer than we'd like them to. We it's want a big a, problem. We want point to point. We want to have a five minute to a 15 minute right. test. When and do we you have, think? And like many others. Every from American. What I understand we're close to 50% where it's point to point test. We are making thousands of instruments, thousands of tests right now, tens of thousands that can be distributed to various parts of the country. But you have to understand, and we've even sent some of them to other countries where they had a big problem. Jonathan, almost 50 percent, in fact, I think the number might be over, is immediate testing. The other's tough. You take a test, you have to send it to a laboratory, Let's say that takes a day. Let's right. say it's a day. It's difficult. You know, so it's three or four or five days. There's nothing you do about that. But when do you think we'll have it for I everyone? I think that you what will day? have that relatively soon. I mean, again, what does that mean? you already have half. Yeah. Uh, I would much rather get back to you because I don't okay. want to have you That's write fine. in one month. That's I fine. didn't make it. I missed it by yeah, a day. And it's it. a headline. Mr. President, I want to talk about the, the federal intervention. In Excuse me. Yeah. One thing I would say about yeah. testing. Because we test so much, we show cases. So we show many, many cases. We show tremendous number of. I know you're smiling when I say no, that. No, but, but I'm come on. I mean, I've no, heard you say this. Other but countries don't test like we do, do so know, they don't show cases. Just a couple of points on that. I wasn't going to continue on the testing, but you said it. So we're testing so much because it's spread so far in America. We're testing and so much because we had the ability to test. Okay. Because we but, came up with tests. But South Korea, Jonathan. We weren't even. We didn't even have a test. When I took over, we didn't even have a test. Now, in all what, fairness, why would you there have a was test? no test The virus didn't this. exist. How would Excuse you have a test? I was say, okay. There was no test for this. No, we didn't have a test because there was no of test. Of course. In, in a very short order, we got one test, we got another test. It we was got broken another. the first Many one. of those tests are now obsolete because we've, right. you know, it's called science and all of a sudden right. something's better. But because we tested so many people, 55, 60 million people very soon, we get cases. You test, some kid has even just a little runny nose, it's a case. And then you report many cases. So we look like we have more cases than massive countries no. like China, which, by the way, doesn't report, as you know. Well, I, like, I don't put any stock in China's no, no, figures. The point, is, yeah. the point is, because we are so much better at testing than any other country in the world, we show more cases. I, the, the figure I look at is death. And death is going up now. Okay. No, and it's no. a thousand a day. If you look at death. Yeah, it's going up look. again. Let's look. Daily death. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd okay? love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death. Yeah. Per, it started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than We're the lower world. than what is that Europe. In Take what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the U.S. is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't. You can't do that. You have Why to go. Can't I do that? You have to go by. You have to go by where. Look, here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases. Why are not dead. as a proportion when of population? When we have somebody, what it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it, where there's a case. Oh, okay. The people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the U.S. has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, because you have to go by the cases. Well, look at South if, Korea, for example. Fifty-one million population, three hundred deaths. It's like it's you, crazy you compared don't know to that. Country. I do. It's you on don't your, know it's, that. Don't, you think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I an advanced won't get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you don't know that. And they have spikes. Look, here's Germany, one. Germany, low, 9,000. Here's one right here, United States. You take anyway. the number of cases. Okay. Now look, we're last, meaning we're first. Last? I don't know we what we're first in. As a well, take a look. Okay. Again, it's cases. Just, okay. Um, and we have cases. Because I mean, of the testing. Wait, a thousand wait. Americans are dying a day, but I understand. I understand on cases it's different. No, but you're not reporting it correctly, Jonathan. I think I am, but if you take a look at this other chart, okay. look, this is our testing, I believe. This is the testing. Yeah. Yeah, we do more tests. No, wait a minute. Well, don't we get credit for that? And because we do more tests, we have more cases. In other words, we test more. We have. But, now take a look. 
The top one, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. The, the top, Jonathan. If, 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 if hospital rates were going down and deaths were going down, I'd say terrific. You deserve to be praised for well, testing, they but even, they're all going you know, they very rarely Hosp talk. 60,000 Americans are in hospital. If you watch the news or dying or read the papers, they usually talk about new cases, new cases, new cases. I'm talking about death. Well, you look it's at death. Up. Death is way down from where it was. It's, it's a thousand death. a day. It was two and a half thousand. It went down to 500. Now it's going up death. again. Excuse me. Where it was is much higher than where it is right now. It went down and it's it went up like, again. But now it's going down again. It's, it's going, going down in Arizona. It's going down in Florida. Nationally it's going, going down in Texas. Take a look at this. These are the tests. It's going down in Florida? Yeah, it's going. It leveled out and it's going down. That's my report as of yesterday. Anyway, Mr. President, if I could change subject. It is going down in Arizona. It Arizona, is it is. Texas, Arizona, it is. Texas has big spiked, problems. And it is. It, it spiked, and it's now going down in Florida. It's evened out and going down in Florida. I have to see those figures. But but you have to look at this. This is the number of tests compared I to the rest of the world. I don't deny your figures. You've done more tests by far than the rest right. of the world. I don't and deny because that. Because we've done more tests, we have more cases. You, you have can take more infections. Check it, check it out. Mr. Your President, um, different subject. It's been widely reported that the U.S. has intelligence indicating that Russia paid bounties or offered to pay bounties to Taliban fighters to kill American right. soldiers. Mm -hmm. You had a phone call with Vladimir Putin on July 23rd. Did you bring up this issue? No, that was a phone call to discuss other things. And frankly, uh, that's an issue that uh, many people said was uh, fake news. Who said that it was, was fake news? I think a lot of people, uh, if you look at some of the wonderful folks from the Bush administration, uh, some of them, not any friends of mine, were saying that it's a fake issue. But a lot of people said it's a fake issue. There was dispute well, we within call, the intelligence. We had a call talking about nuclear proliferation, which right. is a very big subject, where they would like to do something, and so would I. We discussed numerous things. We did not discuss that, no. And you've never discussed it with him? I have never discussed it with him, no. Reg I would. I'd have no problem with it. But you don't believe you know, the intelligence. It it's because you don't believe the intelligence. That's why. Uh, everything, you know, it's interesting. Nobody ever brings up China. They always bring Russia, Russia, Russia. If we can do something with Russia in terms of nuclear proliferation, which is right. a very big problem, bigger problem than global warming, right. a much bigger problem than global warming in terms of the real world, uh, that would be a great thing. But no, just... uh, it never reached my okay. desk. You know why? Because they didn't think it was intelligence. They didn't think it was real. It was they in your written think, brief, though, apparently. They didn't think it was worthy of it. I wouldn't mind. If it reached my desk, I would have done something about it. It never reached my desk because... Do you read your written brief? I do. do I you? read a lot. Really? You know, I read a lot. They like to say I don't read. I read a lot. Uh, your, I, your daily I comprehend brief. extraordinarily well, uh, probably better than anybody that you've interviewed in a long time. Uh, I read a lot. I spend a lot of time with... Uh, at meetings, uh, usually it's once a day or uh, at least two or three times a week intelligence. Because this was apparently talking in about India, right. talking about right. with the problems with China, talking about so many different elements of the world. Mm -hmm. The world is a very uh, angry place. If you look all over the world, we call up. I get, uh, I see, 22 soldiers were killed in India with China fighting over the border. It's been raging for many, many decades. And they've been fighting and back and forth. I, I have so many briefings on so many different countries, but this one didn't reach my desk. The reason I say this is, is even if you don't believe the, this particular piece of intelligence, and there is dispute, no doubt, there is dispute in the intelligence community about it, your former, uh, John Nicholson, former head of forces in Afghanistan, said, and this is when he was working for you, that Russia is supplying weapons to the Taliban. Isn't that enough to challenge Putin over the killings of well, U.S. We soldiers? Well, we supplied weapons when they were fighting Russia, too. You know, when we were, when they were fighting with the Taliban when, yeah, in Afghanistan. It's a different era. Well, it's a different... I'm just saying, yes. But, but does that... We, how no, does that I'm affect... I'm just saying we did that, too. But how does that... I don't know. I didn't ask Nicholson about that. He was there for a long time, didn't have great success because, you know, he was there before me, and then ultimately I made a change. But you surely heard that, right? I mean, it's well known in the intelligence um, community that they're arming the Taliban, Russia. Uh, I don't know. When you say arming, is supplying weapons. Paying or they Russia is supplying weapons uh, and money to the Taliban. I have heard that, uh, but it's never, re again, it's never reached my desk. I mean, he said it on the record when he was in... Hey, Russia doesn't want anything to do with Afghanistan. Let me just tell you about Russia. Russia used to be a thing called the Soviet Union. Because of Afghanistan, they went bankrupt. They became Russia, just so you do understand, okay? The last thing that Russia wants to do is get too much involved with Afghanistan. They tried that once. It didn't work out too Last well. question on this subject. And by the way, we're largely out of Afghanistan, as you probably know. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, 
you, the US troop level in Afghanistan right now is roughly the same as it was when no, you... No, you're wrong. No. Mr. President, we, I'm sorry. We have to do... Okay, are you ready? No, no. We'll I need... be down in a very short... It's already planned. Well, well that's, the, that's a different let, let question. We'll be down in a very short period of time to 8,000. Then we're going to be down to 4,000. We're negotiating right now. We've been there for 19 years. Oh, no, no, 19 I know. 19 years. But, but if you just let me finish my we'll question. We'll be getting out. I understand. Look, the... When you came in, it was 8,800. You boosted to 14,000, and now you're back down to 8,500. We're, we're now... My uh, question we'll to you... We'll be at 4,000. I'll give when? you the exact... Very soon, very soon. What will be the number... Very soon? 4,000? Very soon, yeah. Like how soon? I don't want to tell you that. I don't want to tell it's you It's big that. news. What is that? that is it's going down to 4,000, isn't it? No, I've always said... Well, what about, we're what about election get, day? We will get largely out. On election day, how many American troops will be in Afghanistan? Uh... Probably anywhere from four to five thousand. That's almost as many as when you came into office. No, it's not. Eight thousand. We had, we had much in. more. We had a lot of people over there too. Eight thousand eight hundred. A lot of people. Troops. And we did a good job. We wiped out ISIS. Have you we thought about going down to Let zero? Let me just tell you what you don't say. We took out in Syria. We took out ISIS. We hundred percent of the caliphate. Right. When I took over, Obama, it was totally rampant. ISIS right. was all over the place. We took them out, we captured them, we killed them. 100%, not 99%. Right. I want to get out at 99. Right. Everyone said, oh, please, would you stay? I stayed. 99% was good, but 100% of the caliphate. We took out Soleimani. Yeah. We took out yeah. al-Baghdadi. Yeah. We took out people that nobody thought possible. Al-Baghdadi was the biggest terrorist of them all. They couldn't find him. I took him out. Soleimani, even bigger. I took him out. I've done things that no other president's done. None, I mean, fortunately, not too many. They should have never been in the Middle East. The decision to go to the Middle East and get into the Middle East was the single biggest mistake made in the history of our country. That's my opinion. You told Fox News recently that you couldn't say whether you'd accept the results of the 2020 election. What does that actually look like as the sitting president? I mean, it's unprecedented. What would well, that actually look Hillary like? Hillary Clinton never accepted well, she, them. She I mean, conceded on totally, She conceded she still on doesn't them. accept them, well, and she got she got that's important very point. easily. That, that's an important point. She conceded on election night. Now, she grumbled about it and, grumbled, and said all sorts of grumbled, things. Grumbled? She okay, wrote books fine. about it. She wrote books. Use the word grumbled. Fine. But, she wrote books about it. <laughs> that's fine, but and I'm just... she got beaten easily. I get it. I get it. 306 to 223. I, I'm that's not disputing lot. you beat Hillary Clinton. That's a lot. Listen, what I'm asking is, is you're the, you'll be the sitting president in the White House. What does that look like, I'll not accepting... I'll tell you what it looks like. Are you litigating? Oh, let me tell you what it looks okay. like. Okay. So we have a new phenomena. It's called in... It's called mail-in voting, where you send... Where new. a governor... It's well, been here since the Civil new War. In terms of the kind of, do, uh, the kind of millions and millions of ballots, they've never. Done it'll be it'll be like bigger this, this year because of the pandemic. Bigger, not bigger, massively bigger. Yeah, because of the so pandemic. So they're going to send tens of millions of ballots to California, all over the place. Who, who's going to get them? I have a friend who lives in Westchester County. They send applications, not that. His son passed away. He had a beautiful, wonderful son, young man, passed away seven years ago. He called me. He said, "I just got a, I just got a ballot." Probably for an my son Robert, Probably he not. died seven years ago. Somebody got a ballot for a dog. Somebody got a ballot for something else. You got millions of ballots going. Nobody even knows where they're going. You look at some of the corruption having to do with universal mail-in voting. Absentee voting is okay. You have to apply. You have to go through a process. You have to apply for mail-in. Absentee mail -in. voting it's the same is thing. good. Look, hey, look let's, let's do concrete. Let's do Jonathan, concrete. They're sending out applications. Governors, download them millions them. of ballots. No, they're not. There it's is, applications. You can there get is the no way you can go through a mail-in vote without massive cheating. I honestly don't understand this topic with, with go you. Go ahead. The Republican Party has an extremely well-funded vote-by-mail program. Your campaign puts out emails telling people to vote by mail. Correct. Your daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, she did robocalls in California saying it's safe and secure, mail-in voting. L I, let me tell you. The Republican we have won. no choice. That was an all-mail-in race. Let me tell you. You ready? Yeah. We have no choice. Because right now we have, but we're, we have many court cases that we're waiting. We have one filed in Western Pennsylvania. We have many court cases where we're trying to end it. We went through World War I, you went to the polls, you voted. We went through World War II, you you've went had, to the polls, you voted. You've had mail-in voting and since the Civil War. now, because of the China virus, we're supposed to stay home, send millions of ballots all over the country, millions and millions. You know, you could have a case 
where this election won't be decided on the evening of November 3rd. Absolutely. This election could what's be decided with two months later. It won't be two months, but what's wrong with the proper it mailing count? It could be count? decided many months later. Have you discussed... You know with... why? Because people, lots of things will happen during that period of time, especially well, when you have tight margins. Lots of things can happen. There's never been anything like this when you try... Now, of course, right now, we have to live with it. But we're challenging it in many courts You're going to litigate. Go, all over the country. Mr. President, the other day a reporter asked you about Ghislaine Maxwell. You said, quote, I just wish her well, frankly. I've met her numerous times over the years, especially since I lived in Palm Beach, but I wish her well, whatever it is. Mr. President, Ghislaine Maxwell has been arrested on allegations of child sex trafficking. Why would you wish such a well, person well? Well, I don't know that, but I do know that... She has. She's been arrested for that. Her you know that. friend or boyfriend... Epstein. ...was either killed or committed suicide in jail. She's now in jail. Uh-huh. Yeah, I wish her well. I'd wish you well. I'd wish a lot of people well. Good luck. Let them prove somebody was guilty. I mean, you do know that oh, she's... Oh, so you're guilty. saying you hope she doesn't die in jail. Is that what you mean by wish her well? Her boyfriend died in jail, and people are still trying to figure out how did it happen. Was it suicide? Was he killed? And I do wish her well. I'm not looking for anything bad for her. I'm not looking bad for anybody. And they took that and I mean, they she's made a child, such, sex, alleged child such sex a big though. deal. But all it is is right. her boyfriend died. He died in jail. Was he killed? Was it suicide? I do. I wish her well. Um, let's move to Portland. Um, I'm sure you've seen the disturbing footage of people in fatigues beating the no, Navy no, no, veteran. No, 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 no. No. Well, here you go. It's there. The fake news. It's not fake no, news. No. It's on video. For pepper spraying him. For nine days, these people were anarchists and agitators and some protesters, but these were anarchists. Okay. These people were beating the hell out of the city. They were beating up our federal buildings and our federal courthouse. We told the police to stop it. You make sure. And the police wouldn't do it. Not the police. Your own Justice Department and Homeland Security Inspector General. Excuse me. But your Inspector Generals Excuse are investigating me. unconstitutional. You're trying now to blame law enforcement instead of anarchists. I'm, I'm instead not. of Antifa. I'm not. It's Antifa and anarchists that are causing the problems, not law enforcement. Our law enforcement, if we didn't have people at our courthouse, and they're strong, tough people, and they don't want, they, they try and be very good, believe me. But if we didn't have people there, you would have your federal course, a $600 million building, you would have that thing burned to the ground. Right I'm now. asking you about tactics and about the unmarked vans where they're rounding people up. And I want to... Okay, let me tell you about unmarked. Can I just finish my question? Well, let me tell you about unmarked. Can I just finish my question? Because it relates to this, I promise. This is from Rand Paul. Quote, we cannot give up li liberty for security. Local law enforcement can and should be handling these situations in our cities, but there is no place for federal troops or unidentified federal agents rounding people up at will. What is your response to Senator Paul? First of all, these are Homeland Security people. They're securing a courthouse. They're Border Patrol. They're, they're Homeland Security. Elite units. Border. Hopefully they have Camo, ice in there. Hopefully gas they have ice. Now, do you know why they're unmarked? Because Why? these uh, terrorists, these Antifa people, these people that are anarchists and agitators, when they see the name on a uniform of a, of a person, a policeman or a law enforcement person, they find out where that person lives. And then they go and they scare the hell out of the person's family. And so they do it for that reason. It's just common sense. There's nothing secret about this. And you know it. You see it, what's going on right now. We have Chad Wolf. They have people. He's doing a fantastic job. He's the acting head. He's doing a fantastic job. Chad Wolf has pickets out, very dangerous looking people outside of his house. He's going to be just fine. He's tough and he's got people. But if you have the names on all of these uniforms, you'll have these maniacs in front of their houses uh, scaring their family and their wives and or husbands, whatever it may be. I think it's a very good reason not to have your name. Why should you have identification? Look, My name is Bill Smith, and here's where I live, the, and I'm a member of... The really serious concern is no, no, the that's reports... A, no, no, not that's about a that. Serious the serious concern, concern is, is, is the reports of people being rounded up and not being told why they're being detained. That's what's being investigated why? by... Mr. President, the, the inspectors generals... The inspectors generals... You know why? You know why they're being detained? Well, yeah. There's I an mean, investigation. Are you, do you support that investigation? Well, I haven't seen the result yet. But do you support the, the, the initiative of it? No, I think that actually, you don't. The, I think Antifa should be investigated, not the law enforcement. They're investigating. Think you should, of, they shouldn't be investigating. Have you been watching television? I have. Have you been seeing the, the violence? Sure. And the, now, if you watch NBC News, like I watch NBC fake news, I'm watching it 
Lester Holt, real beauty. And I'm watching this NBC News sham, and you have a mayor named Wheeler. And he's standing out there, and he's being accosted by the people. You know that. Being, I mean, it's horrible what they're doing to him. Portland, the mayor of Portland. And he thought he'd go out, he'd be a mayor. What they were doing and saying and everything else to him, I happened to watch it on a different station. He had to get out. He had five security uh, so guards. He got out with his life. Okay. Mr. President. If you watch, wait, if yeah. you watch NBC News, they make him like he's standing there bravely fighting with the people in a positive sense that everything is wonderful. No. He went out there. He's lucky he got away with his life because they would have killed him. He had five guards. But NBC News showed it like he's standing with the people for justice. Look, those people, take a look at the, what they've done to the courthouse. Take a look at what they've done to the streets. Take a look at the violence. It's this getting is, worse since they've gone in. It's, no, it's getting actually, worse. it's getting better. We had a very good, we've arrested a lot of people, and we now have a 10-year rule. You knock down, you try and knock more down More businesses damaged, more you violence. You touch our courthouse, you go to jail for 10 years. Turning to the rest of the country. We haven't seen protests like this since the 60s. I mean, we're seeing... These are democratic Well, just if, you, if I could finish my question. Cities, if I could finish my question. And they're doing it for political reasons. You, you, you said you've done so much for African Americans. I have. But, but there are Americans... Criminal justice yeah, I understand, reform, opportunity... But, but let me finish. There are Americans out in the streets asking for change. Mr. President, have you ever met with a Black Lives Matter activist to hear them out, hear their arguments? Well, Black Lives Matter started off, to me, very badly, because it was... Did you ever meet with one? In a pigs in a blanket... Burn them like bacon. That was my first, the first time I ever okay. heard of black. That was three, four years ago. Right. Pigs, meaning policemen, pigs is what they're referring to in a blanket. Fry them like bacon. I thought it was a, so. I, I got off to a bad start. I got off to a very bad. Would start. you meet with a, so Would you meet with a Black Lives Matter activist? I would, but I think right now when they paint, why haven't you? When they paint the sign, nobody's asked for a meeting. I, I've never been. Nobody's ever asked me for a meeting. Let me tell you, with African Americans, I'm doing very well. They had the best employment numbers they've ever had. They had the best job numbers they've ever had. They were making more money than they ever made. We were all set until we got hit by China with the virus, Jonathan. There was actually, we were becoming a very do unified believe, country. Do you believe Because though, of success. I understand. Do, do you believe, though, Mr. President, that many police treat black people differently from white people? Well, I hope not. I hope not. There's certainly the, the... Uh, You've seen the statistics. The knee on the neck was a disgrace, OK? Yeah. It was a disgrace. I'm talking about what does systemic racism mean to you? Uh, I hope... The answer to that question is no. Do I, does anybody really answer that question accurately? But does what about not really hope? Know? What about analysis? What's your cold hearted uh, I have view seen of it? where there is a difference, and I don't want there to be a difference. I don't like that there would be a difference. But with that being said, why do you think black men are two and a half times? White people I know, but why do you think black in men a larger number in, in quantity, police have killed but, white people? But why do you think black men are two and a half times more likely to be killed by police than white uh, men? That I don't know, but uh, why? I don't, why do you I think don't that? like it. But you must have thought why? about it. Why? I don't do know why, but I don't like it. I do know this. Does it speak to something systemic? Police have killed many white people also. But proportionally, what, what, what does it speak to? Uh, it speaks to something, if that's the number, you're telling it is me the a number. number. Okay, if that's the number, it speaks to something that, to me, is unacceptable. And what do you do about it then? Well, I think we've already done a lot but of you things. But you haven't, it still exists. No, no, no. I, I understand your achievements. I know what you're going to say. I'm not suggesting you haven't done a lot I've done economically. I've called criminal justice I get it. reform. I'm just saying what changes... Friend, President Obama couldn't it's get it It's not my done. friend. He I'm, tried, I'm like, asking about that he statistic. He tried, but he couldn't get it I'm done. Not, I got criminal I justice get it. I get it. I got opportunity zones. I took care of the historically black... You know, if you look at... If you look at what I've done for colleges, for black colleges and universities, I got them funding. Obama never did it. I did more for the black community than anybody with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln, whether you like it or not. People say, oh, that's you really you, you believe you did more than Lyndon Johnson, who passed the Civil I Rights Act? I think I did, yeah. How? Because I How got possibly did you just reform done. I got prison reform. Lyndon Johnson. I've done things. I've done, well. He passed the ask, Civil Rights ask, Act. How has it worked out? If you take a look at what Lyndon Johnson did. You think the Civil Rights Act was a mistake? How has it worked out? Because frankly, it, it took a long time. But for African Americans, but you under think that my was a administration, Jonathan, <laughs> under my administration, African Americans were doing better than they had ever done in the history of this country. So I did a lot. Job numbers, all of the money. They had money. They were getting great. Their, their percentage was, was up. Their housing ownership was up. 
They did better than they've ever done I just until don't know we how got hit. And now, you know what we're doing? I'm building it up again. We're going to have it. Next year will be a great year, unless it's screwed up by somebody that doesn't know what he's doing, which could happen, but I don't think it will. John Lewis is lying in state in the U.S. Capitol. How do you think history will remember John Lewis? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know John Lewis. Uh, he chose not to come to my uh, uh, inauguration. Uh, he chose... Uh, I, I don't... Uh, I never met John Lewis, actually. I don't believe. Do you find him impressive? Uh... I can't say one way or the other. I find a lot of people impressive. I find many people not impressive. But no, but I didn't Did go. Did you find his story he impressive? Come, he didn't come to my inauguration. He didn't come to my State of the Union speeches. And that's OK. That's his right. And again, nobody has done more right. but, for but back black to, Americans than I have. I understand. He should have come. But back, I think he made a big mistake. But, but, I think ta he but taking come. your relationship with him out of it, do you find his story impressive, what he's done for this country? He was a person that devoted a lot of energy and a lot of heart to civil rights, but there were many others also. There's a petition to rename the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama as the John Lewis Bridge. Would you support that idea? I would, I would have no objection to it if yeah. they'd like to do it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Would have no objection to it whatsoever. Okay. Mr. President, you've been so generous with your time and we really appreciate it. Well, thank you thank very you. much. Great honor. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir.